for today. For today, and we have celebrated the resurrection of Jesus last week. But you know what? Every Sunday we celebrate our risen Lord. He died on Friday. He laid in the tomb on Saturday, and on Sunday he resurrected. And we don't just celebrate that resurrection Sunday just one time, like it's an event. But we live. With the power of re- the resurrection of the Lord every day, in the song, our God Savior, Jesus, your you are my power. Um, you give me grace to live, Jesus. What strength in weakness? Let me hide myself in Him, tempted, tried, and sometimes failing. He. My strength, my victory wins. Praise the Lord, and Jesus. This is what He said: "Apart from Me, you can do nothing." Do you believe that? That apart from Me, you can do nothing. Oh, apart from Me, you can't do anything. But the an apostle Paul experienced the power of the resurrection of the Lord in his life, and so he affirmed. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The resurrection has a very important、um, effect in our lives, and the Lord died, but He resurrected, and He is the risen Lord. Resurrection is the power that each one of us. As followers of Christ, can experience every day in our lives. It is the power of the resurrection that brought Jesus from the dead to life, and it is reserved for each one of us today. This power is reserved for us, so that we can, when we receive that power of the resurrection, then we will experience an tra- amazing transformation in our lives, in our serving the Lord、uh, ministry. The Apostle Paul wrote in this letter to the Ephesian believers, talk a lot about the power of God in the church, and the secret to the p- power of the church is that each one of the believers in the church has a spiritual gift, and all those spiritual gifts are used with you know, the grace-given power, the grace power that God gives to us. This is what the apostle Paul said in Ephesians four seven to ten. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into the lower regions, of the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. Our heavenly Father, we ask that you come to us at this time. Holy Spirit, speak to each one of our hearts through your word, and help us to listen to your word. Help us to experience the Lord Jesus Christ today and the rest of our lives, so that the power of your resurrection, Lord, will transform our lives and use our lives. To glorify you, Lord, and bring many to you. May we be faithful, devoted disciples of yours, so that we can love you, Lord, and love each other as you have taught us by the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We pray that you rule through this time, so that my words and our meditations, Lord, will be pleasing to you. And Lord, give us your power and spirit to live for you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray this. Amen. Through the four short verses here, we learn about how we use the spiritual gifts by the grace power that God gives to us. And the first thing that we learn is that Christ is the gift from God. There are two types of gifts that are、uh, spoken of in verse seven. In Ephesians four seven says, "But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift." One of the gifts that the Apostle Paul calls is to measure 
one is to measure the other's the other gift. The grace here is a, is a gift, and that is the second gift. It is not the first gift that is given to us. That is given each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift, or talking about the gift, the Christ gift, which is the first gift. This is the first gift that God gives to us, and that is the Christ is the gift. This is very difficult to、uh, to translate here. In an English version, it says the gift of God of Christ, and another page、uh, it says Christ's gift. So if we see the giving, the Christ's gift, or the gift is Christ, the gift of Christ. And according to our translation here, we see that this is the Christ that gives us these gifts. No, actually, in the、uh, the Greek、uh, in the Greek translation is that Christ is the gift. The word "gift" lets us see more, understand more about Christ. That is, Christ is the gift that God gives to us. Here, the apostle Paul does not say anything that Christ gives to us, but it is the gift that God gives to us. What has God given to us? He has given us Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And so, Jesus Christ is the gift that God has given to us. And this gift is Jesus Christ, as the apostle Paul has said in Second Corinthians nine fifteen. Thanks be to God for His. Inexpressible gift, inexpressible gift of God, and that is His only Son that He has given to us. Christ has been expressed to us through, or given to us through, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. How do we know that Christ dwells in us? It is when the Holy Spirit dwells in us. That is the gift that God gives to us when we come to Him, when we repent of our sins and open our hearts to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Then we have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The version in the Bible says, "The gift of the Holy Spirit." In Acts two thirty-eight, Peter has said, "Repent." And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, God gives to us a gift, and that gift is the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in us. Another place is it is a gift of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean? That is, the Spirit is given to us. So we see that the gift of the Holy Spirit, the grace. Power is different from the spiritual power. Is the gift of the Holy Spirit that is the Holy Spirit coming to dwell in us, to live in us? That is the spiritual power that God gives to us. And so Jesus say that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive the power. You will receive the power or the spiritual power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Samaria, and. To the ends of the earth, when the Jesus, when the Holy Spirit comes, we receive spiritual power from God, and the gift from the Spirit is the spiritual gift. So when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us, He brings us another gift, the second gift. That is the first gift when we come to know, receive Jesus our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us and live in us. But when the Holy Spirit comes, He gives us another gift. He gives us the ability to serve Him, and that ability to serve Him. We need God's presence, His power, His wisdom, so that we can use the that power and that gift that God gives. So we see that the simple gift that God gives to us, the foundational gift, is the presence of the Holy Spirit in us, and that is what causes you to be transformed into a Christian. How do you know that you're a Christian? It's when the Holy Spirit dwells in your life. Who has the Son has the Everlasting life. Whoever does not have the Son has does not have everlasting life. But the condemnation of God is still upon that person. Do you have the Son of God in you, dwelling in you? Jesus says, "Who does not have the Spirit of God of Christ does not belong to Him." In Romans eight nine, 
if you do not have the Spirit of Christ, you do not belong to Him. You may be a very、uh, faithful member of the church. You may gather every Sunday and meet on on church. You may sing in the choir. You may be in the board of the church. You may be the president of the. Young couples group, but if you don't have the spirit of Christ dwelling in you, then you do not belong to Christ. If you do not have the spirit of Christ, you do not belong to Him. So the first thing when we repent and come to know Jesus and be baptized in the Holy Spirit, then we receive the gift that God gives to us, and that is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. That is a requirement that is so essential. Without it, we cannot have. Can, it is very important and essential. And the verse that we have read in Ephesians four seven talks about the second gift, that is the grace,、uh, the grace that is given to us, the special abilities, the special grace, special ability given by the Holy Spirit to serve. This is the spiritual gift that God has given to each one of us, so that we can serve the Lord. That is the spiritual gifts. And two weeks ago, we learned about the spiritual gifts, and some came to me and say, "Pastor, I discovered that I have two spiritual gifts." Praise the Lord! Yes, I hope that each one of you have discovered that you have at least one spiritual gift. We must have at least one spiritual gift because when the Holy Spirit comes to us, He is the gift that God gives to us, and He brings His gift to us, and that is spiritual gifts. The、spiritual gifts are the gifts that God gives to us, so that we can serve Him, so that we can bring God's love to other people. This is a,、uh, what God gives to us. But grace was given to each one of us. The grace that was given to us is the second gift. The second gift is the spiritual gifts. And the First Corinthians twelve eleven says, "The same Spirit apportions." All these gifts to each one individually as He wills. God is one who gives the Holy Spirit a portions or gifts according to His will. It's not that you hope upon it and you get it. It is because of by God's mercy He wants to use us. Some people use as God uses as the eyes or the ears or the mouth. Each is very important and each is very special and each is very essential in the body of Christ, and we will together study、uh, this. And this spiritual gift must be used according to this great power that God gives to us.、And、the second point that we need to know is that we need to know the resurrection power, the power of the resurrected Christ. First of all, we need to know that. Spiritual gifts are gifts given by God, and second, we need to know the power of the resurrected Christ. In Ephesians four, verse eight to ten, the Apostle Paul connected the gift of Christ to his ascension, his descension and ascension. Let us look at verse eight to ten in Ephesians four. Therefore, it says, "When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts." To men, in saying he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth. This is also a point that we see in the Hebrew. I mean, in the Greek, Greek、uh, way of saying it is that they don't say the lower regions of the earth. They say into the lower regions, comma the earth. That is. He has gone to lower regions, to the earth, lower regions on this earth, to dwell amongst us. Jesus came. He was born, and after he was died and resurrected, he ascended to heaven. And when he ascended to heaven, he brought the blessings to bring to us. When Jesus went to heaven, he. Received a gift, and that gift is the Holy Spirit. He received it from God the Father and gave the Holy Spirit to His church. Amazing, right? That Jesus was victorious, and so God gave him the gift of the Holy Spirit, and He gives the Holy Spirit to us. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens, that He might fill all things. In this passage, Paul talks about the possession of Jesus Christ. How he brings all these 
uh, into heaven and from heaven. And what does Paul say? This is a quotation from Psalm 68 to talk about the theme of according to the measurable gift of Christ, according to the immeasurable gift of Christ. The spiritual gift is one thing, and we know that we have spiritual gifts, and the power to use that spiritual gift is something else. The ability, yes, we have, but we also need to have the power to use that ability. So now Apostle Paul brings the two together, grace or the gift or the spiritual gifts is given to us so that we can use according to the immeasurable power of Christ that God has given to us, that has reserved for us, and that is Christ. And that power is the power of the resurrected Christ. He has been exalted to the throne, and He is now living in each one of us through His Spirit. And now we ask ourselves, what kind of power do we need in order to operate the God-given gifts? What kind of power do we need? Do we need uh, like a, a, a strong spirit, a strong um, character, a per strong personality, an outgoing personality in order to use the spiritual gifts? No. The power here is not those things. Is it also a positive thinking or self-confidence? Is it positive thinking or self-confidence? No, it is not positive thinking or self-confidence. Is it intelligence or education? Oh, I, you know, my brain, I'm lacking. I don't have not much education, so I can't use spiritual gifts. No, all of these is by the power of God. Jesus Christ is the our power. The power here. Is the spiritual power? It is the power of the resurrection. Jesus Christ resurrected, and the resurrected Jesus Christ is living in each of us. He is the power that we can use the spiritual gifts. We cannot do anything apart from Christ, and we can do everything by the One who gives, who strengthens us, and that is Christ living in us. So it is not by our power, or that we have the power to do this or that. That I can become an effective person for Christ. No, I must use the spiritual gifts that God has given to you, me, by the power that God has given to me. But if we use just our natural ability, it is not spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts can be reviewed or be used through our natural talents. We have talked about that, but we not touch on it anymore here. But here we see that it is given to us. The power, spiritual power, is what God gives to us in Philippians three ten. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. In the Vietnamese version, it's lacking the word "and." That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Or we can say. To know Jesus, to know the power of His resurrection. To know Jesus is to experience the power of His resurrection in our lives and through our lives. That is to know Jesus. It is not just to know in your head, but also to know in experience. When your life is transformed by the Lord to be one who loves God and to love people, and that is accomplished not just through your words, but also through your actions. Realistic actions, tangible actions, not just to speak about love, but you truly love through action. Not just to talk about the restoration restoration program in Vietnam for the addicts, but to give or to actually walk in that walkathon. That is to act out love. That is to have the power of the resurrection, to know Him, and the power of His resurrection. Paul has considered all things as loss, all the education, all the morality, all that Paul had. He considered all that as rubbish. To in comparison to know Christ and to know the power of His resurrection. Do you want to know Christ? Do you want to experience the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ, or do you only see the power of this life, an outgoing personality, uh, a conf 
confident, positive thinking. You know what? All those things don't count because apart from Christ, you cannot do anything. We must know that. That and to know that only in Christ you can do all things. For Jesus Christ came down to earth by His、um, ascension, I mean descension, and then He ascended to heaven, to His throne, and now He gives us His resurrection power to live for for Him. Jesus Christ paid a high price to come down to earth to die on the cross, and then buried in the tomb, and then resurrected. We partake. We partook of the communion this morning when we ate of that bread and drank of the cup. We experienced unity with Christ, and in that union with Christ, we have the power of the resurrection. Jesus paid a high price to give His children the spiritual gift and the spiritual power, or the grace gift and the grace power, to live for Him. Jesus came, and He died, and He resurrected, and He ascended. And he is now sitting at the right hand of God to pray for us. But he is also dwelling in each of our lives to have Christ living in us, Emmanuel, God, with us. That is Jesus Christ. He lives with us through His Spirit. Jesus returned to us. He did not leave us as orphans. I go, and I will return to you. And He came to us. In the being of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, and to let us remember that the spiritual gifts that God gives to us are not just common, normal things, natural things. No, they are spiritual gifts that God has given to us according to His will. And this spiritual gifts is not the natural talents that you have or the abilities that you have trained yourself. Into having, it is gifts that God has given to you, us. But though God has given to us the spiritual gifts, we need to use it and use it for the Lord. And we need to experience the power of the resurrection, Lord, in us. The spiritual gifts can be compared to like、uh, instruments、uh, or equipments that we have in our in our lives. In my life, there in my house, there is the rice cooker, there is the TV, the refrigerator, the computer. So much, but you know what? All those equipments or tools, though they have different abilities, one helps me to cook rice, one gives me light. But you know what? All those tools and equipments and instruments cannot be used if there was no power, no electrical, no electricity. So two weeks ago. Uh, you, we talked about spiritual gifts, and we tried to discover what our spiritual gifts is. And each one of us could be maybe the rice cooker or the、uh, refrigerator, or whatever. But you know what? By our own power, we cannot say, "Oh, I have the spiritual gift of witnessing." And then you use all your ability that you have to speak、It、has no power because when there is no electricity, though you may have the ability, that rice cooker has the ability to cook rice. But without electricity, it cannot cook. You may have the ability, maybe the、uh, spiritual gift. Maybe you have the spiritual gift to enc- encourage, or to witness, or to teach. But without the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us, then we are we can do nothing. We need God's power. We need Him. The electrical appliances has different、uh, voltage or power voltage. But I know that some of these run by one ten volt.、Uh, the others they run by two hundred twenty volts. And、uh, some like LEDs only use twenty watts. It's enough for it to shine. But other appliances use about a thousand watts, such as the microwave o- oven needs about a thousand watts to work. But the same, all come from one source, right? Same way, each one of us has different abilities, but we only have one source of power, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the power for us, so that we can use the spiritual gifts that God gives to us. So our title of our message today is "Grace Gifts and Grace Abilities and Grace Power." We are not worthy of. At all, but God gives to us, and that is by His grace. The 
Believers at Ephesus knew that the power to live is by the resurrection power, and there's no other explanation for a church who is in the midst of a of a city full of sin, and they are so full of immorality, sexuality, and they、um, worship the goddess Diana. And yet, the church at Ephesus has grown strongly. It is by the power of the resurrected Christ. These believers do not rely on the power of the world. They don't feel like they need the the governmental power or of the economic power or of education power. Intellectual power, but they need the power of the resurrected Christ from the victorious King, and that is the reason why Paul wrote in saying that the work of God in the believers at Ephesus is in them and through them through the resurrected Christ, and each grace ability or grace gift. Is by the power, and the key here is living by the power of the resurrection that has deep impact on this world. Ephesians three twenty to twenty one. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. Let us meditate on that, ponder about it. God is one who works where He works in us. Within us, by His power, He can do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. That is the power of Christ working in us and through us. We have our desires, smart desires that we pray and ask God. But Jesus said, God says, "You have dreamed very little. Now I can do more than what you have asked for and thought of." To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. All those things is for the glory of Christ Jesus. Jesus works in us so that we can love God and love people、uh, tangibly through our actions, so that the Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified. Even Paul, Paul planted churches everywhere by the power of the resurrection. At work in him, he said in Ephesians three seven, of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of His power. So according to the gift of God's grace, God gave the ministerial gift, but He also gave me the、uh, given me by the working of His power. So He became a minister of the Lord. To bring God's power to all people, and so the limitation of the resurrection power is the limitation of faith. If we do not have faith, God will not work in us. Jesus went to the city of Nazareth, and at Nazareth, they did not believe. So God, Jesus did not perform any miracles, and yet Jesus went to Capernaum and Galilee to perform his miracles because they believe. And the limitation for God's power, resurrection power, to work in us is because we do not believe. If we believe that Jesus is resurrected and living in us, and He is working in us, and that He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and that He is the one that has all power to do all things above and beyond what we ask and think, when we have that power, God will work in us, and the Church of Christ is the source that will bring blessings and love. And grace to not only to the Vietnamese but to all people in South Florida. Do you believe that? May the Lord help us to tr- trust in the Lord. When faith grows, then the workings of Paul also increase. In the same way, when we have faith and faith increase, the power of Christ will also increase. It is not always that we see the results right away, but Paul believed that God will bring about the results. For the power of the resurrected Christ never fails. When it works, it will have results. And the fourth point that we need to know is that the resurrection power is available by faith. As I have shared with you, the power of the resurrection is available to you by faith. It is available for true believers by faith. This power is. 
available for children of God when they use it by faith. What is faith? Faith is the response of mankind to the promise of God. God promised that He would come and dwell in us. God promised that we can do all things through Him who get, strengthens us. And because of that, by faith, we hold on to God's promise. And that is what is pleasing to the Lord. And by faith, God will work through us and in us and through us. Faith is a hope, is a waiting upon. It is a trusting that God would do what He promised. God, you would do what you promised. The Bible lets us see that Abraham grew in faith and totally trusted in God that He has the power to accomplish what He has pro to accomplish what He has promised. God promised to give Abraham a son. Not only one son, but that his descendants, his generation, would be like the stars in the skies and the sand on the ocean. And he waited 20 years, 25 years, no son, no child. He waited. He waited. He trusted that the one who promised is truthful and that he will fulfill what he promised. And by faith, God considered him a righteous man and that he is a friend of God, considered by God. Maybe we are like that. We are, do not see it before our eyes. By faith, we believe that Jesus is living in us and He is working in us and through us to bring about results to accomplish what He has promised. If children of God believe that Jesus has resurrected and He is living in each of our lives, then you can trust and believe that He will work in you and through you. Maybe your emotions are, you don't, don't feel anything. You don't feel the power of God. You don't feel the presence of Christ in you. But did God tell you to feel it? No, He did not tell us that. He told us to believe. Believe is to place our reliance on the promise of God. Today, you may feel that you have a lot of faith, and then tomorrow you feel you have no faith. That doesn't matter. What matters is is God faithful? Is he ha does He have power? It's not by what we feel, whether we feel it or not. Just need to believe in the Lord, trust in Him, and trust in Him. And when we trust in Him, God will transform normal, common actions into supernatural actions. We see that Jesus, when He, he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was victorious right where he prayed, and because he was victorious in prayer, he could walk, he could go to the cross. For without prayer, there is no results. It, we can spend a lot of efforts and not pray, then it would be no, and no benefit. For power comes from prayer. It is by intimate relationship, fellowship with Christ, that we have spiritual power. Let us not put aside power. Maybe power is a very, it's a struggle. It is a, a fight that we have to struggle with. They say, the, the devil may say, hey, you can go be visiting, you can be practicing for the choir, you may be doing cooking or whatever, and then you don't pray. And because you're too busy, you don't pray, and so you don't have power. How can you have? And we are on the Lord. How can we have spiritual power and rely on the Lord? So the first thing we must do is pray. And the second thing is we have to pray. The third thing we have to do is pray. We resolve all things through prayer. Do you believe that? But don't say that, oh, I just pray and don't do anything. Can't. Because after being victorious in the Garden of Gethsemane, we had to walk to the cross. We had to go to the cross. We pray for missions, but we must also go out in missions. We have to have both cannot lack. We need both. And so power by faith, that through prayer that we receive the power of the resurrection. If you believe in the resurrected Lord and believe that He is living in you, then you can believe that He will act in you and through you by faith. Faith is pleasing to the Lord. And faith 
creates or brings about the standard for us to receive the power of Christ. God would transform our common actions into supernatural actions. By our power and strength, we cannot stop the vehicle that is running at 50 miles per hour. It, we cannot just stand there and put our arms out and stop the vehicle from, from running anymore, right? We're not supermen. We cannot stop the, the vehicle. But a very small person, a big, big vehicle, and yet you just put down the brake, step on the brake. That is the power brake. You're very small. You cannot stop the vehicle. But because of the power brake, you just have to step on the brake gently, and then it stops. The same way, we are very weak, common, normal, ordinary people. But because we have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our lives, we have the power where it costs Jesus Christ to come back from the dead. That resurrection power living in us, we just need to step on that brake and it will stop the vehicle. So we may do very ordinary things, our ordinary words, yet it brings about God's love, God's mercy, God's truth spoken through very simple, ordinary actions of ours will bring blessings to those who receive those ordinary actions because of the power of the resident Christ in us. We can believe, we need to believe that Jesus can do beyond, above and beyond what we ask and think. We must believe that. If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have Him. And if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, He can do amazing things in our lives. We need to experience, we need to experience the resurrection power when you use your God-given gifts to express love for God and others. Philippians 3.10 reminds us that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. To know Christ and the power of His resurrection goes hand in hand. Children of God, truly experience God when you experience the resurrection power of Christ transforming our lives and to use our lives to bring transformation to other lives, to cause us to be people who worship God and to bring others to worship Him, to cause us to be those who with our heart, mind, and soul love God and love others as He has loved us, and to make others to love God with all their heart, mind, and soul, and to love others also. That is how we become disciples of Christ and to make disciples for Christ. Let us earnestly pray to the Lord so that the children of God will experience the power of the resurrection Christ in serving Him through the spiritual gifts that God has given to us. We have two gifts. The first gift is what? Christ Jesus. He is the grace gift that God has given to us. And the second gift is what? It's the grace power, the grace power that God has given to us through this spiritual gift that He has given to us to, to love God and to love others. And the church here of Christ will re bring about great fruits for the Lord when we use the spiritual gifts that God has given to us by the resurrection power. What is the vision that God gives to this church? In this year, may the Lord help us to meet and be friends with at least five people. We will make friends with them. We will spend time with them. And then we will sow the seed of the gospel of Christ to them and then bring them to Christ and help them to grow in Christ. And we need to continue to pray about this. Do not lose that card. If you lose that little card, then ask me and I will give you that card and write those names in and pray for them. You have met them then check off that point. And then the next point is that we spend time with them. Each one of us, God has given spiritual gifts, different spiritual gifts to, to be used. And we rely on each other and help each other to do this. The church has many, many ministries, but without the power of the resurrection Christ, we would not bring about 
fruits for Christ. May the Lord help us to desire His power, so that we can use the spiritual gifts that He's given to us to serve Him. May let us stand up and pray. Our Father, Almighty God, we thank you for giving us spiritual gifts when we come to you, Lord. But before that, Lord, you have given us yourself. You have come to dwell in our lives. To live in us, and we have you, Lord, and we rejoice because we have you to love us and to receive us as your children. And you give us your spirit to dwell in us. And thank you, Lord, for giving us spiritual gifts so that we can be uh, effective people for you, so that we can show your love to our brothers and sisters and to those around us, according to the spiritual gifts. That you have given to us, and your power working in us, we lift all glory up to you, Lord. May our lives become effectual vessels in your eyes, in your hands. Jesus.